Today's video is brought to you by Bright Sellers. More on them later in the video. In today's video, we are discussing Wine Etiquette 101, the do's and don'ts every lady and gentleman should know. Cheers! Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome to The Daily Connoisseur. Today we are discussing wine etiquette. What are the basic rules that everyone should know? What are the do's and don'ts? We're going to get into all of it today. All right, let's start off with the most important do and don't, which is how you hold your wine glass. Do hold your wine glass by the stem or the base. Don't hold your wine glass by the barrel. This is what separates the amateurs from the people who know proper wine etiquette. So make sure that you are one of those. The reason why you hold the wine glass by the stem or by the base is because you don't want to warm up your wine. You don't want to change the temperature of it. And if your hand is cradling the base like this, you can quickly warm up your wine. Another reason is because this could leave unsightly fingerprints all over your wine glass, and that's not attractive either. So, delicately hold the wine by the stem. If you are a gentleman with really large hands, you can hold it by the base. Now that makes me extremely nervous because I feel like I would just drop the wine. So I personally like to hold it by the stem. Just note that this also looks much more elegant and you instantly look a bit more sophisticated when you hold it by the stem. We've all seen people who have their wine and they've had a little too much to drink and they're holding it by the barrel and it all just seems a bit chaotic. <laughs> so hold your wine glass properly, hold it by the stem or the base. Okay, the next tip. Do drink from the same spot on your wine glass every time. Don't leave lipstick marks all around the rim of your wine glass. This is especially handy for people who are wearing lipstick or lip gloss, but naturally the lips have oils on them and you're going to leave a little bit of a mark. It looks so sloppy and frankly disgusting when you have lipstick marks all around your glass. So try to stick to the same spot each time to avoid that faux pas. Let's talk about how to pour wine. When pouring wine, hold the wine bottle from the base as you pour it. Don't hold it from the nozzle. This gives off very unsophisticated booze hound vibes and that's not what you're going for. <laughs> so hold it steadily from the base and pour accordingly. When pouring your wine, do fill your glass slightly less than halfway up. Do not fill your glass all the way to the top of the rim like you did when you were in college. It's just not a good look. I'm going to break away briefly to tell you about the sponsor for today's video, which is Bright Cellars. So people ask me all the time if I drink wine. The answer is yes, not on a daily basis, but for special dinners and on holiday occasions. So when I do drink wine, I want the best quality possible. It was so exciting to take the quiz on Bright Cellars and have them personally match me with the wines that are curated to my palate. The wines arrive directly to your door, my favorite part is that each wine comes with its own wine education card. So for example, this 2019 rosé from California brand Sprig & Rose shares the notes and preferable pairings. I enjoyed this bottle when my cousin came to stay. Here's an example of another one, Voyage dans les Vents from Bordeaux, France, which was a delicious medium bodied red. It was really exciting to open the box, see the wine education cards and the wide variety of wine that I would never choose myself. <laughs> I like them to, to recommend things for me and it, it's been fun to sample them. So Bright Cellars offers sustainable varietals and biodynamic wines that are found far beyond your typical grocery store. They're giving the Daily Connoisseur audience 50% off their first six bottle box. That's six bottles for just $53. So click on my link in the description box to get started today. So thank you so much to Bright Sellers for bringing us today's video. And now back to the tips. When discussing wine etiquette, a lot of people think about how to hold the glass, how to pour the glass, maybe even how to taste the wine. But do you really think about your drinking pace? This is very important. Do drink at a leisurely pace, matching that of your companions or less. Do not drink more than everybody else at the table. Don't down your wine. Do not get drunk. That is a big no-no. When dining at a restaurant, allow the waiter to refill your wine glass if desired. 
But if you see the waiter coming and you would like more wine, do not down your wine really quickly so that the waiter could give you another full glass. Again, this looks very greedy and uh, you shouldn't care so much about drinking so much wine. <laughs> so try to remain elegant. If the waiter arrives and your glass is still pretty full, you can just give a brief gesture indicating that you would not like any more wine at that time. When doing cheers, clink the wine glass at the bell of the glass, not at the tip. When you clink it at a bell, you'll get a nice rich sound. When you clink it at the tip, you run the risk, if uh, it's hit a little too hard, of the wine glass actually chipping. So the wine glass is more substantial at the bell and that is where you should clink your glass. When saying cheers, you should look your partner in the eyes. Don't look at your wine. This next tip is as important as how you hold your glass. This is so crucial. If you would like more wine, always offer to refill other glasses before you fill your own. Now this applies to everything from water to iced tea to whatever you're drinking. Always look around at your dining companions to see how you could serve them first rather than yourself. So this is critical. If you are the hostess, let's say you don't even want any more wine yourself, but look around the table and see if you can offer more to the people around you. This is just gracious manners. So you should never be caught taking a wine bottle and filling your own glass without offering to fill others first. We must always be thinking of others before ourselves. Here's a tip not many people talk about. Do make sure that you are indeed drinking from your own wine glass <laughs> and that you didn't accidentally take somebody else's glass. This has happened to me before and probably a lot of people, especially if you're at a formal event and um, things are chaotic. Okay, make sure that you are actually picking up your own wine glass. Remember where you set it down, if you're at a party and you set it down, or if you're at a table, make sure it's yours, that it's always to the right. Never reach to the left to get a wine glass. That's probably not yours. That's probably your dining companion's glass. Always make sure that you're actually drinking out of your own glass. If you are serving wine in your own home, do try your best to serve wine in the correct glass. Now you do not need to have an enormous collection of wine glasses, especially if you don't drink wine that often. And sometimes you can get away with a pretty generic wine glass such as this one, which probably could be used for both red and white wine. But if you want to be a bit more accurate, red wine should be served in a larger barrel and white wine should be served in a slightly smaller barreled glass. If you're having a champagne or a sparkling wine, that should be served in a champagne flute. And if you're having something like sherry, that should be smaller in a sherry glass, for example. So again, you don't need to have an extensive collection of wine glasses, but do your best to serve the wine in the most appropriate glass that you have. The next do is to take your food into consideration when deciding what wine to serve. And this is very basic, of course. When you have um, a very hearty meal, for example, let's say you're serving a pot roast with root vegetables, you're not going to serve that with a chilled rosé. And so for me, I would choose a red wine for that type of meal. A rosé would be something uh, lighter, like a summer salad or a very light dish, maybe a very light pasta. So take your food into consideration when you're serving the wine and don't just serve a wine because it's open, uh, even if it doesn't match the meal. So you have to match it, otherwise it ruins the experience. My final must is to serve your wine at the correct temperature. So red wine should be served at room temperature, which is 65 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit and dry white wine should be chilled and served at around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, as should rosé. So white wines and rosés should be chilled and red wines should be served at room temperature. So a big don't would be to put your Pinot Noir in the refrigerator and then serve it right away, for example. You don't want to do that. You want to allow it to get to room temperature. Some people like to decant their wine to get it just at the right temperature, and that is another option as well. I was researching wine etiquette horror stories and I came across an article from the Wall Street Journal that talked about a few common wine etiquette faux pas, so I thought we could address those here. So the first one is the wine hog. 
Let's say you are at a dinner party or you're at a restaurant and somebody is holding on to the wine, they have it, they keep pouring their own glass, which is so tacky, but anyway, we already discussed that, and they won't share it with anybody else. Now, when I did research on this, the woman who had responded to this, I didn't quite agree with her. She had this scenario happen in real life and she reached across the table to grab the wine bottle from the person who was hogging it. For me, that's a big no-no. I am all about being a little bit more detached, a cool eater. If they want to hog the wine, go for it. I'm not bothered by it, <laughs> you know. But if you are really desperate to have some more wine, or maybe you're more concerned for your guests, the most appropriate thing to do would be to say, would anybody like more wine? And then the person who's hogging the wine bottle will be forced to then pass it or serve the other people. So that is the best way to deal with that situation. The next wine etiquette horror story is what do you do if somebody spills wine on you or your rug? Or what if you're the person who does it? Okay, this is a nightmare situation. It's happened a lot uh, and you know, it's just an accident. So if this happens, if you're the hostess and somebody accidentally spills red wine on you or your rug, don't make them feel bad. Immediately say, don't worry about it, it happens and clean it up or take care of it without causing too much attention to the situation. You don't want to embarrass your guest and chances are they feel really bad that they did it anyway. If you have done this to somebody else, your hostess, let's say you spilled wine on them or their rug, um, a wonderful idea is to, of course, apologize and to offer to help clean it up. And then the next day, send them a note or a gift or something to make up for it. And finally, the last etiquette horror story that I can think of is, what if you treat people to dinner and everyone knows you're treating them to dinner at a restaurant? and your guests order either the most expensive bottle on the menu or they just keep ordering glass after glass or bottle after bottle, what do you do in that case? Well, if you have offered to pay the bill already and upfront it's already known that you've offered to pay the bill, you just have to pay it. But make a mental note to not do that again with this particular person or with this couple. So it's, it's incredibly important if you are a guest um, and you know you're being treated at a restaurant, don't order the most expensive bottle of wine. Okay, that's, just try to go for something more in the mid-range and be respectful of their finances. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring. Don't forget to click on my link in the description box for 50% off your first six bottle box. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.